Hey guys, Michael here from michaelsherlock.com. I want to continue my coverage of Mobile World Congress by talking about Nokia's announcements that they had today. Let's start off with the Lumia 900. They've previously announced the Lumia 900 as an LTE AT&T exclusive. That exclusivity has run out before the phone even hit the market. An LTE version will also be coming to Rogers, which is a Canadian market, in April. There will also be an HSPA Plus international version launching sometime in quarter two. What's also pretty cool is just like the N9 and later the Lumia 800 before it, a white model has been unveiled and a lot of people are really clamoring over that white, elegant look. Moving on with the Lumia lineup, Nokia also went on to announce the Lumia 610. This is a much lower end smartphone and is taking advantage of recent relaxations on Microsoft's part in terms of minimum spec requirements for Windows Phone hardware. But this is running, again, Windows Phone 7.5, a modified version that, again, supports lower spec phones. has a 3.7-inch WVGA display with 8 gigabytes of storage and 256 giga or megabytes of RAM, a 1,300 milliamp hour battery. And, you know, this is, a, again, like I said, a lower-end smartphone, about $200 U.S. unsubsidized in quarter two. Although they, they talk about launch markets, I've just converted the prices to dollars because a lot of people that watch my videos are more familiar with dollars. But again, that's quarter two sometime in Europe. It'll be launching in white, which a lot of people like, cyan, magenta, and black. Um, and again, this is a Windows Phone device. That's really Nokia's push, or push? We'll see in a second what I mean by that. Uh, the final thing I want to talk about in terms of Windows Phone and Nokia is a new app they're launching called Nokia Reading. Basically, what this application does is it's an aggregate. It takes news feeds, ebooks, audiobooks, and puts them all into one unified view. They say it's sort of like a magazine layout, so we can kind of compare it to Flipboard if you are familiar with that app on iOS. Um, this, again, will be a free application for all Nokia Windows Phone devices. And I want to talk about one more device that they announced, probably the biggest announcement that they made, the 808 PureView. This is a 4-inch device with a 360 by 640 pixel display, a 1.3 gigahertz single core processor, 512 megabytes of RAM, and 16 gigabytes of storage. Now, I was talking about Windows Phone, all that. This is not running Windows Phone, even though Nokia has previously said they're going all in on Windows Phone. This is going back. This is a Symbian Bell operating system. That's an extremely polarizing decision right there because a lot of people don't like Symbian and have strong opinions about Symbian, particularly in the U.S. market. So to launch something on Symbian, which is basically a dead platform, Nokia has previously said that Symbian is dead, is kind of an interesting choice. But... I'll get into what this really means for the future of Windows Phone in a second. So this is a $600 unsubsidized phone, and, and you're thinking to yourself, Michael, a 1.3 gigahertz single core, a 360 by 640 pixel display, half a gig of RAM, what, what's going on here? How is this $600 unsubsidized? Well, this is the follow-up flagship to the N8, which means this has an unprecedented 41 megapixel sensor. That's unbelievable. We've been talking earlier this week about how great some of these 8 megapixel shooters are, and Nokia comes out touting a 41 megapixel sensor? That's completely ridiculous. Now, there, there are problems with such high megapixels. I think it, it's becoming known that just higher and higher megapixel counts don't really mean anything. In fact, once you get over 10 megapixels, a lot of times more and more megapixels actually reduce quality because images turn out more noisy and more blurry because you need so much more light for such high amounts of pixel density. Well, without going into too many of the boring specifics, they've, Nokia has engineered a huge lens that lets in an exorbitant amount of light, and that's really needed again for all those pixels, all 41 megapixels of them. Now, it's a 41 megapixel sensor, but you're not actually able to capture 41 megapixel images. The highest single image that you can take is 38 megapixels big. But what's actually more interesting than having a 38 megapixel image, which you can then crop and do whatever you want because it's so large, you can actually choose to take three, five, eight megapixel images, and you can zoom in without losing any clarity. So what does that really mean? Well, basically what happens is you, when you take a, a, a picture, which you, which you decide, let's say, is eight megapixels, the phone will actually still take a 41 megapixel shot. 
And what it will then do is it will capture, it'll take seven pixels that were captured and using intelligent algorithms condense that down into one pixel. So your final image when you look at it is still a five megapixel or an eight megapixel image, but it actually has been scaled down essentially from a 41 megapixel original shot, which allows unprecedented clarity and will basically allow, to t allow you to take out a lot of noise, a lot of sort of blur, uh, and make things just so much more sharp because you're taking the Im the data from seven pixels and turning that into the data for one pixel, one super pixel, let's say, that is very clear and very easy to look at. So that's that's a way to look at it. Again, the, it, this really comes down to though if they can if you can get enough light to satisfy the the hunger we could call it of all those pixels jammed into that. And again, this phone is in no way small. This huge sensor requires some space, so this is kind of a hefty phone. But what's also really cool is this captures full 1080p video, and you can actually zoom in losslessly four times. So it's, it's in a way, it's not optical zoom, but it's not digital zoom either because you're not losing quality. You're not actively cropping. It's using, again, that huge sensor with 41 megapixels in it, and it allows you to basically zoom in and still get a full 1080p resolution and full 1080p quality video, which is really pretty, a pretty cool innovation. Also, they're touting their audio capture quality, they're calling it Nokia Rich Recording, and that'll supposedly allow you to capture CD quality audio. They talked about being able to take this into a concert and record all the video and all the audio from a huge concert venue, all that noise, and not have distorted audio, which is actually a really cool feature. They also talked about Dolby Digital Technology powering playback, so you can have excellent playback over headphones or virtual surround sound with Dolby Digital 5.1, whatever you're into, uh, and that's actually a pretty cool, a pretty cool feature. Really though, I think uh, this phone, the 808 PureView, is really like the Nokia N9. Those, both of these phones, I, I think, aren't really designed to sell. Obviously, Nokia is going to sell them. You're going to be able to buy it sometime. But the idea here is to introduce, for the N9, it was that form factor that we see in the Lumia 800 and 900, and here it's to introduce this new amazing sensor and the innovations in terms of the algorithms that they've developed. And I think really the point of this is to solidify it and refine it so when this launches in a Lumia phone later in the year, that's my expectation, they didn't announce that, but that's my expectation, once that is refined and then they can put it into the Lumia line, make it more you know, available for everyone, make it appeal to larger, a larger broad group of people. That's really what I think this is about. Of course, being able to tout out a 41 megapixel phone at CES, that's a huge thing. That gets a lot of re name recognition out there. And then you'll get another boost in recognition when you launch this in a phone people actually want to buy. Because personally, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be cynical and say, I don't want this phone. I've used Symbian in the past. This is 2012. Even with Symbian Bell update, for me, it's just too outdated. I need iOS, Android, um, or, or of course Windows Phone at this point. I don't really think of going back to Symbian as a as a real option for me in terms of my daily driver. But again, the technology behind this will allow refinements and will allow Nokia's end of 2012, early 2013 smartphones to be extremely competitive in the capturing of content, which has been Nokia's bread and butter. So guys, that's the Nokia announcements from the Lumia 900 uh, expansion to the global market to, of course, the 808 PureView. I'd love to hear your feedback in the comments section below. Is this practical, having such a huge sensor, a huge lens? And is it just going to die in a Symbian-based phone? Or, or are you with me and you think this has a bright future for further innovation later down the line? I'd love to hear your feedback in the comments section below. Thanks for watching, guys. And you know what? Have a great day.